A NASA asteroid probe is due to begin its return to Earth today. The space agency says that it will take around two and a half years for the OSIRIS-REx to make it back home. It is carrying a precious one kilogram cargo of dust and matter vacuumed from the asteroid's surface. Scientists hope that the cosmic rubble will provide some clues about how life began on Earth. The asteroid named Bennu gives researchers a window into the past. It's about 500 meters wide and composed of the same material that shaped our planet Earth. And that's what makes Bennu such a great find. Every six years, its orbital path brings it close to Earth. Even a small change in its flight path could result in a collision course. Asteroids have changed Earth's development. About four billion years ago, they rained down on the young planets. Asteroids actually brought things like water and organic chemistry, the chemistry that we're based on to Earth in the first place. So when you go out and you see what this was like billions of years ago, is that going to give us a better window into how, how we got here, how life started on Earth? Are some of the chemicals in your body, some of the water in your body today, did they originally get delivered to Earth through asteroids? The space probe set out to answer these questions. After landing on the asteroid, it spent 500 days mapping the surface. The probe also researched its inner structure. The data showed how different pockets of warm air on the surface influenced Benno's flight path. This was vital information in case the asteroid ever threatened to crash into Earth. A robotic arm was designed especially for the probe. It was installed in October 2020. Last year, the probe edged close enough to Benno to allow the arm to be shot a half meter into the asteroid's surface. Pressurized nitrogen gas was set free. Enough matter was shaken up that the probe was able to catch pebbles and dust. After churning up the material, it was vacuumed up by the spacecraft's getaway thruster. The robotic arm placed this collection in a special capsule then in April, the probe sent photos documenting the location of the sample collection. Now the probe is returning to Earth. When it gets close, it will drop the capsule. Researchers around the world look forward to examining the contents. The perfect kind of mission of discovery that many of us have dreamt of. I mean, we saw Apollo and the, the men walking on the moon returning samples, but doing this all robotically in a place that would be very hard to send women or men, um, kind of makes it all very real. The precious cargo is set to land in Utah in September 2023. And let's get more now on the mission. We are joined by Nicole Schmitz from the DLR Institute of Planetary Research in Berlin. Welcome to the program. Um, we have heard that the OSIRIS-REx will take two and a half years to return to Earth with this precious cargo now. Tell us a little bit more about what scientists are hoping, hoping to learn from the asteroid sample. Well, a lot actually, and uh, the, uh, we might or we hope to find answers to quite some profound questions. So asteroids like Bennu are basically leftovers uh, from the formation of the solar system. So we hope that some of the mineral fragments that we might find inside Bennu, they could be older than the solar system itself. Um, and some of the microscopic grains in the samples uh, could actually be the same ones that in early ages um, kind of spewed from dying stars and then eventually coalesced in order to make the sun and um, the planets in the solar system like our Earth itself. So basically Bennu and the samples from Bennu, that's basically a time capsule from the very early solar system. And they will tell us um, about long-standing mysteries and questions that we have about the origins of our solar system and maybe also about the sources of water and organic molecules on Earth. So fascinating. Um, but, you know, it hasn't been able to get to easy, excuse me, to get this material. Um, collecting uh, the asteroid sample was really complex, actually. So just walk yeah. us through, you know, what, what challenges the mission had to overcome. But actually, there were quite some uh, surprises that um, the mission had um, from Earth-based observations. And that was basically the only information that the team had early on when planning the mission. Um, the team expected more of a generally smooth surface and only a few large boulders um, on the surface of, of, of Bennu. And the spacecraft was actually designed according to that. But 
actually when the spacecraft got there and uh, we had the first images from the surface, it turned out that there were a lot more boulders on the surface and the surface was a lot more rugged than, um, than the spacecraft was designed for. So the mission's plans for a sample collection needed to be adjusted according to that. And that also meant that the error of margin or the, the, the margin for, for error for the very tricky descending maneuver down to the to the surface um, was a lot more complicated and a lot more challenging than, than the team had thought. Really interesting. But it worked in the end. Oh, sorry. Um, I just wanted to quickly ask you, because we understand that you're on the Hayabusa 2 team, which brought samples back yes. to Earth from another asteroid back in December. Um, what lessons have been learned there so far? Any exciting discoveries, for example? Yeah, I mean, you have to see that um, that material actually that we get back from these asteroids is so precious that you don't kickstart or right away jump into the observations there or into the analysis. But we do have some very early results from uh, examinations of a very small part of the samples that uh, colleagues in Tokyo have done already at uh, the Japan Aerospace Agency. So one of the um, very early results is that measurements show that the material must have been subjected to very, very high temperatures. We are talking temperatures, which is around in the order of magnitude of 300 degrees Celsius. And that cannot come from um, from the heat from the sun alone. So actually that suggests that um, internal heat, radiative internal heat or planetary collisions um, must have affected Ryugu when it was still part of its larger parent body. Wow. And that would have also evaporated the water that might have been there. That's really, really fascinating stuff. Nicole Schmitz from the DLR Institute of Planetary Research in Berlin, breaking it down for us. What's at stake here? What has been discovered so far? We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.